Basically, there are five core ideas that we've tried to communicate in these two volumes. Volume one sort of takes us up to two and a half, and then volume two takes us the rest of the way. Let me share these five basic ideas. The first is that traumatic experiences are prevalent in the lives of children. By now, the research is abundantly clear that experiences like witnessing domestic violence, experiencing abuse and neglect, having a parent with a substance abuse or mental health issue, um, occur in the lives of children much more frequently than any of us would hope, and much more commonly than many of us had realized. This leads to the second idea, which is that the trauma response that can result from these experiences can have a profound impact on a child's development, and in particular, on a child's learning behavior and relationships in school. So a child's ability to process information and language, a child's ability to self-regulate his or her emotions, attention, and behavior, a child's ability to form trusting and effective relationships with adults and peers are all things that can be affected by traumatic experience. The third point is that if schools become what we call trauma-sensitive learning environments, they can uh, become communities for children that can buffer the impacts of these traumatic experiences and help students go on to become successful despite the adverse experiences that they may have occurred. In the first book, we got as far as coining the term trauma-sensitive schools and, and naming that this was something schools should strive to become. But it's in the second volume that we really define what a trauma-sensitive school is. And there are six attributes that we say make up a trauma-sensitive school. I'm not going to share those six attributes with you. You've got to read the book. Um, <laughs> but I assure you, they're very good. Um, so you should all take a look. Um, the fourth point, the fourth basic idea that we've tried to communicate is that for schools to come to embody these six attributes requires a whole school process, a whole school effort. Becoming trauma sensitive isn't about identifying the kids who have had traumatic experiences, pulling them out of the classroom and sending them down the hall to some special service or intervention. It's about schools creating a whole school culture where every child feels safe and supported. The fifth and final idea is that in order for schools to do this, to engage in this whole school um, culture change, requires that we make trauma sensitivity a major focus of education reform. And so um, in our project, we advocate for laws and policies to set the conditions that will allow schools to become urgent about the issue of trauma sensitivity and engage in a process um, to make their schools safe and supportive. That's a basic summary of what we've tried to accomplish substantively in these two volumes. 